Hi hey students, uh, today I want to talk to you about graphing the data that you collected during the molar volume of hydrogen gas lab. Um, and remember that the point of this lab collecting the data uh, and crunching the numbers and the graph we're going to create is to see what the relationship is uh, for volume of a gas per moles of gas at standard temperature and pressure. So we're trying to verify what we already have learned in class. And so because the first thing we want to do is uh, kind of decide what kind of graph is going to be best to represent this data. Because we're looking for a relationship um, between two variables, a uh, scatter plot with a line of best fit or a trend line, because we're looking for a trend between those two variables, that's going to be our best option. And uh, it's always a good idea when you're going to graph things to get some idea of what that graph should look like. So let's just do a quick sketch. We're going to do some kind of a scatter plot here. Um, remember that on our, our independent variable, our IV independent variable is going to go on the x-axis here, and our dependent variable is going to go on the y-axis here. And so when we set this up, we should expect to see our independent variable on the bottom and the dependent variable on the side, the vertical axis. Uh, what is the independent versus the dependent variable here? The independent variable is the uh, variable that, that we changed. And so the one thing that we varied in this experiment was the mass of magnesium, right? We had different masses of magnesium, but then we translated that or converted that to moles of hydrogen gas. So that's really what the experimenters manipulated uh, for the independent variable was moles <clears throat> of hydrogen gas. And remember that that's going to be in liters, okay? The dependent variable, then the thing we were measuring is the volume of hydrogen gas that was produced. And so we should have uh, the volume of hydrogen gas uh, in, oops, uh, in liters, sorry. This is liters. Down here, this should be in moles. So uh, moles of hydrogen gas should be our independent variable, and volume of hydrogen gas in liters should be our dependent variable. I mean, we know that we should predict that as we add more moles of hydrogen gas, that we are seeing a higher volume. And so our scatter plot should kind of look something like this, right? So that's a rough sketch uh, when we go and create this. If it looks way different than that, then we probably did something wrong. So let's go check it out. So here's a data set. Your data set is probably going to look a little different than this, and you may have some more columns, and that's fine. Um, I'm in Google Sheets here. You can do this in Excel, but the process is just a little bit different. So in order to, to graph these two variables, remember the two things we want. Um, are the volume in uh, of the, uh, sorry, this should say moles of hydrogen gas. So uh, moles of hydrogen gas there and volume of hydrogen gas. Those are the two columns we're going to want to select. In order to select those, we're going to click in the center of the cell and drag and highlight that, all of the, that information. Now we want to also highlight uh, the adjusted gas volume in liters. Uh, in in uh, column D here, and in order to select that data set as well as what we already have selected, we're going to hold down the control key. So hold down control and click in the center and highlight that data set as well. Okay, now we're going to come up to our insert menu and insert a chart. And you may or may not get something that looks like this. So I'm going to show you what to do if it doesn't look like this. The first thing is we want to make sure that we're creating a scatter plot here and not some other kind of a chart. So if your, um, if your chart that came up is not a scatter plot, under the setup menu, you should go down here and click on the scatter plot as opposed to any of the other charts that are on here. Okay, so make sure it's a scatter chart. Then we also want to make sure that the x-axis is hydrogen gas in moles. Remember, that was our independent variable. And the gas volume <clears throat> is our y-axis or the series that's going to be plotted against here. Also, if you have use row 1 as headers and use column B as labels, or it should say whatever column is here. For me, it's B. It might be different for you. And so that's going to set your uh, graph up pretty well if you have all of that stuff selected. Now, if you need to go make some changes to this, we can come in here, um, either click down here or click on the customize menu over here. And under chart, axis, and title, so these are all the things under customize that you can change. 
um, under chart axes and titles, we can go up here and uh, change the horizontal axis title. And uh, I have moles here twice, so maybe we'll just put moles like that. And uh, we can also do that with the uh, vertical axis if we need to change that, and also the title. So we can come over here and change the chart title. Definitely don't like that title. So your title should represent what you're trying to figure out in this lab. And so a better title for this might be, um, you know, comparing the moles of hydrogen gas to the volume of hydrogen gas or something to that effect where we're uh, giving a little bit more descriptive title. All right, uh, once we've got all of our labels on here, we need to add a trend line and a little bit more information to this. Now, your chart may have automatically put a legend on here. And so uh, let's see, it might have put something like this, uh, you know, but we don't really need that because we only have one data series here. We don't have multiple series. So under legend on the customize menu under under legend, let's take that off. It's not necessary. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is add a trend line. Um, remember, a trend line is really an average line for our data. We're going to have some variation in our measurements um, just because we didn't do everything perfectly. And remember, that kind of goes back to our lessons on measurement and significant figures and whatnot. Um, but this, we don't want to collect connect the line. We actually want a line of best fit or a trend line. So to add that, um, our, our spreadsheet program is going to add that for us. We're going to come to series. Uh, and we're going to scroll all the way down to trend line. So you're going to click trend line, and that's going to automatically give you an average line or um, line uh, regression line. We can change the line color of that if we want. Uh, we need to scroll down now that we've clicked uh, check trend line. We also need to add the equation for the trend line, and that's going to be in the form of y equals mx plus b, like slope intercept form, and that's going to be very useful determining our experimental uh, our experimental volume per moles of hydrogen gas here. So we're going to click use equation. And then, so there's our equation right here, 22.8x plus um, negative uh, 5.37 times 10 to the minus third. That's the equation we want. And then we also want to show the R squared value. So we're going to click on that. And that's going to give us our R squared value here. Now, uh, if we want to change where that is, I think we can come here and maybe put that on the top. Um, and unfortunately, it's still showing our adjusted volume as that, but that's okay. Um, we'll just ignore that. So now we have our equation. We have our R squared value. We're going to use those two things, the equation and the R squared value, to uh, analyze the trend on this line. It's going to help us to understand the accuracy and the precision of our experiment. That should be all you need to do to create your graph. If you need to move that somewhere, you can always come down here and copy the chart and paste it somewhere else, um, perhaps into a lab report or whatnot. Um, also, remember that yours is probably going to look a little bit different than mine, simply because I have a different data set than you do. So you may have more, hopefully you have a few more data points on here uh, than just the five that I have to give you a little bit more better data, a little bit more better data there. Um, and I think that's it. So good luck making your graph and uh, let me know if you have any questions.